dear members of this uh, workshop, I will I would like to talk about one could say the proto history of a replica of a late Roman military vessel, which is put on display since more than 25 years in the Museum of Ancient Navigation in Mainz. Um, it might be worthwhile to, to give a very short information about the Museum of Ancient Navigation. This museum is part, forms part of a, a larger unit of a, one of the, the larger German research museum museums um, named traditionally named Römisch Germanisches Zentral Museum. Nowadays with a, another branding called Leibniz, Leibniz with a B, not with a P like Papa, <laughs> um, Leibniz Center for Archaeology. Yeah, um, the, the purpose to, to build this replica was either a museological purpose just to, to give uh, visitors an impression of this, this kind of, of an inland military boat, I would say, I prefer to say. The other one was to, yeah, was caused by the by conservational grounds. It was not possible to to add to add to the the ancient uh, sources to the ancient wrecks any recent material and to protect these these uh, uh, important sources. We decided to rebuild in a way we to rebuild um, this 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 type of vessel. Uh, of course, based on a concept, on a design, and uh, with a uh, with people uh, able to do this, the yeah, the I would prefer to name this object um, a combination of reconstruction and a replica, in so far as the 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 main information we received comes came from the wrecks itself, so from the, the Brima uh, sources, and just uh, parts of the boat, as you may uh, well see, for instance, the, the, the sail or the, uh, the, the shape and dimensions of the oars and the, the body armor of the oar crew and so on, they are based on, on secondary sources, especially on iconography, but never without um, an evidence which comes from uh, from from the wreck itself. Wrecks itself. One one um, example for that. One of these wrecks um, showed a, or preserved a, a mass step uh, and and other other uh, details or other evidence on. Uh, on ore propulsion, and so we had we had the the uh, we, we knew about the this this uh, well combined system of of rowing and sailing on an inland vessel. Well, this the this this replica is based um, on evidence which comes from two different wrecks. Well, in mines. In the winter of 1981-82, several wrecks and parts uh, of, of, of individual craft were found, but two of them are of, uh, were of specific interest because they, sh they share many details, details of shape, but also of the interior of the propulsion system and so on. And um, both wrecks were perhaps over a few years in a, well, sister ships, one could say, in so far as the one wreck was made from timbers cut in AD 385 and with a repair in three, uh, 394, wreck number five was built around 390, 395. And so it made no wonder that they shared so many details and from an archaeological ship archaeological pers perspective they um, 
belong to the same type. These votes were the, the basic, the, the, the elementary evidence to build this, this replica. We can, from these, from the, these wrecks, we can uh, retrieve different aspects of a reconstruction. We can uh, find the main dimensions, beam, uh, depth, and what, what is under discussion, the, uh, the, the length. We can uh, receive from it or um, reconstruct the ship geometry, that means the shape, the, the, the details of shape, which it's a rather compli complicated shape. Next, of course, we find structural evidence, the ribs, uh, the interior timbers, which belong to the reinforcement of the, of the blanking and so on. And as already mentioned, we have evidence of the propulsion systems. Next, we, find, we found a, a different evidence on the on the how the the the, the steering or the, the the side rudders the steering oars or rather I should say the side rudders were uh, mounted, and also we found also details of the ship equipment very small ones co connected to the oarsmen or things like bowlers and and so on. Yeah, they. details of the propulsion system and that means also not only how the oars were were rigged but also how the the oarsmen were accommodated are found with a look on the interior details of of these wrecks i show you here the example of wreck number one and to the left you see a, a photograph from above onto the the gunnel uh, of, of the boat, it's uh, the, the, the port side of the boat, you see the remains of uh, an oar, um, an oar, an, 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 uh, oar a, to a thole pin, excuse me, a thole pin, uh, since preserved, and the next one is seen to the left or to the right. Um, in the, in the, the photograph to the right, you see this is a, a, a picture, a, a, a picture to the interior side. You see um, uh, above the, the thole pins and below there are some stringers and ceiling planks. And these ceiling planks or stringers, the smaller ones are called we call stringers. They show um, interesting features, grooves, recesses, and so on. And these. The, these, these uh, say, timber joints, um, they show an interesting system, um, um, meaning that they, they are um, yeah, located in, in series with, the, with distances uh, very near to the ancient interscalmium. The interscalmium, uh, the ancient interscalmium is known from Vitruvius, who, who says the the, 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 the distance between uh, thole pins is a uh, few cubits, it's around 89 centimeters, and we found this in a range between 89 to 93, 95, and so on. And all of these, uh, these um, um, the Greek would say the metron, this, this, uh, this norm yeah, is found in the different levels. In the upper level, level where the the the, uh, the oarsmen's benches, the, the thwarts, were were fitted, and but also in the in the lower part, I come back to it later, where foot stretchers had to be uh, reconstructed. The the black and white pi picture to the left shows you one of uh, the the example of rag number one, a, a detail. Or in the aft of boat number one, a transversal timber which protrudes the the outer skin of the boat at uh, still preserved on on a port side with reinforce a longitudinal reinforcement and with some 
some uh, the remains of wooden joints or joints to connect something to it. Uh, that this should be the the relict of the the uh, the rigging the rigging of the of the one of the steering oars. Yeah, wreck number five is also of of uh, interest um, in different in different for different reasons. It is uh, it was a very uh, long wreck of more than sixteen meters length. Almost, almost complete in length, I would say, but just preserved up to the well, the, perhaps to the original uh, uh, waterline, up to 35 or almost 40 centimeters um, uh, from from the, the the bottom of the of the keel. And in this in the, this wreck, uh, we found similar evidence um, which could be compared to those details found with wreck number one. You see here, for instance, the, the remains of, uh, yes, of uh, rotten stanchions, uh, pairs of stanchions. They are sometimes preserved two or a pair and sometimes just one, but the other one uh, then is preserved by a nail or something like this, no, by a nail usually. So, and we can reconstruct the, the propulsion system by the, yeah, or the, I should say, the accommodation of the oarsman in the preserved part of this boat by looking, uh, solely looking to these uh, stanchions, which were used, of course, to, 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 uh, to reinforce the, the, the thwarts of of this, of this, of this craft, yeah. and there are other, other details, as these longitudinal um, uh, tables, or say inner inner reinforcements, which uh, stabilize the. It seems they stabilize the the uh, the stanchions of the uh, oarsman's benches, yeah. and you see uh, also the solid floor timber with a mess step, the, the only evidence uh, from, from the mines wrecks, from this kind of mines wrecks, we have um, in total four pointing to, to uh, ore propulsion uh, and just two pointing to the same uh, type in, in question here. And we learned from, from this uh, detail that these boats the propulsion of the, these boats were was based uh, not only of, of, of rowing but also uh, uh, on on sailing. Um, this is one of the aspects uh, which um, bring in mind the well the well the 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 the, the meaning of an, a Mediterranean uh, warship um, traditionally in they they. They, they had a, a sailing rig and an, an oar propulsion. And this is the same in a way transformed onto or into an inland vessel from the late fourth century. And this is interesting enough because if you look at the, at the very end of this wreck, you see the, uh, the remains of a stem post, a stem post which looks very different to, to an, a a modern one, or even to an ancient uh, stern post of, a, of a, a, a cargo ship, for instance, it seems that these boats had the, the typical bow um, silhouette of, a, of an ancient warship. That means a, a convex, concave uh, silhouette. Yeah, from, from these, from these, um, from this evidence the the inner system or the interior of this uh, replica from 1993-94 was designed um, it was designed in those days or already in the in the 80s by my former colleague Olaf Höckmann who prepared also the lines plans of of these vessels and my job was in those days at the beginning of the 90s, well, 
to to subs substantiate to justify uh, certain things. Yeah, but it was um, all the time clear how these vessels looked looked like inside. Yeah. This is the this color picture shows gives you an, a, a visualize the how it looked how it looks uh, inside if well yeah completed in the way found with the with the ancient wreck and it doesn't look very spacey. <laughs> this is also I would say it's also typical for for even. In, in modern times, for a warship or for a military unit, um, economic aspects do, do and did not play any role. It's just it's an, a boat just with power, with engine, but without any space for yeah for making money. I could say. Well, the longitudinal section shown below. Uh, gives you again a, the uh, information how how this was based. Uh, the 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 red the, no the the yellow the yellow ceiling blank is the the with the, the, the grooves for the the Osmond's benches and in the in the section in the level of the the, the feet of the oarsmen, we have evidence of, of uh, each two um, uh, uh, transversal timbers, yeah, which uh, well functioned as a kind of footstep. Uh, the, the English term uh, for it is uh, foot stretcher. Without a foot stretcher, speed rowing is and was impossible. And this again fits very well to the interpretation of these tracks um, with other arguments, of course, to uh, um, being, being uh, vessels used by the military of these days. Yeah, I, I mentioned Olaf Höckmann, my former colleague Höckmann, who was in charge since the beginnings of the 80s with the documentation and the post-documentation analysis of the mines boats. The mines boats, I already mentioned it, were uh, uncovered in winter 1981-82, and he was the person um, um, responsible to, yeah, to start the analysis of these boats. Um, he did that under not perfect conditions because the boats had been raised and had been uh, had been stored in in a in a warehouse for many years in in water tanks, and it was a hard job for him for him to yeah to 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 do the, his research. But he had many informations also coming from the excavation by himself. We, we had uh, photo uh, uh, photogrammetry um, documents, and he made his own his own um, in situ uh, drawings. He made the first attempts of a dimensional reconstruction of, this, of these boats, of the two boats, of the boat type, on which this replica is based. Yeah. So um, the, the main dimensions of, his, of, of this replica are shown here. The length overall comes to 21.6 meters. The, the beam is um, aimed ships, of course, it's 2.7 meters, and the, the height uh, measured from, the, from below the keel to the gunnel is around 0.9 meters. From this length reconstruction, there is an over crew of up to 32. Uh, uh, men, uh, 15 to 16 uh, uh, rowers per side. This was uh, still published by Hoekman in 1997. That means six, no, uh, three to four years after the the, the completion of the, of the replica. In the at the very beginnings of his uh, publications, of his efforts to, 
to, to give a, some answers on this important um, uh, problems of the, of the, the dimensions. He uh, published length as 18.5 18 meters, later, a bit later, 18.7, and then 19 meters. In a way, this boat grew up, grew up in length from year to year. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I say this um, just to explain why I think uh, that the modern reconstruction of a shorter length should be discussed again. Well, the, I come to another aspect. The, uh, the, the replica is, st is still, still uh, on display in our museum, but I believe since more than 15 years that it is at least 3.5 meters too long. But based on, on the same um, proposals from Höckmann in uh, 2003 and 2004, another replica um, um, has been built in, from the University of Regensburg, um, which is more or less the same as we show it still now in Mainz. The difference between the Mainz replica and the Regensburg um, um, uh, reconstruction of boat are some details concerning the the equipment of the boat. He they decided to to alter the the shape of the bow. Uh, they uh, included a, a kind of of, of rail, uh, also. I would say in that part, in the forward part, there's no evidence of a, of a rail amid ship there is actually, and so on. This is one of the, uh, this Rainsburg replica is one of the, of the followers of, uh, of our, our minds um, uh, reconstruction, I would say, or replica activities. Well, this is, uh, the the Regensburg replica as published by Höckmann in 1997 and it shows still the same what he um, yeah, did in the in the late 80s he he stands Höckmann stands for a long version of at least uh, well 20 21.5 meters and that in this case as much as uh, minimum 30 oarsmen. Yeah. They, they are, meanwhile, they are, it, it, it is, uh, came out that there are some problems with it because in experiment, uh, experiments showed with, with the, the, um, with the tank, tank, um, uh, tank tests, for inst instance, but also um, experiments made on the Danube um, showed that the, the performance of the boat is rather small. You see in, on the, the right side a diagram comparing the, the performance of the, I suppose, the, the over, yes, the Overstim boat, which is uh, much shorter than, than the Regensburg replica. And to the right, the performance of, of the Rainsburg uh, experiment. And you see it's uh, of much lower performance than the other one, than the shorter one. And one of the reasons for that is the, the unique boat, uh, the unique uh, bow shape, which is r like a gate. It's a flat, uh, above the waterline, there's a flat, a flat uh, part of the boat and any wave which comes over uh, would would or and did uh, uh, decrease boat speed. Um, so, since uh, since the well the beginning of the two thousands, um, I was in charge with a revisited analysis of the mines wrecks, which was published in two thousand six, and there I well. I think I ju justified uh, also the, 
the the problem of the geometry of these boats in in any te any detail yeah. um from our point of, re of view from a ship geometrical point of view it is impossible to reconstruct the length of boat number five more than seven seventeen point five point six meters that comes the evidence comes from the photo uh, photo uh, photogrammetry uh, plans where the the boat is was measured on a length over 16.5 or 16.7 meters and from yeah from the point of view of a boat designer uh, where you can consider the the the, the water lines of the the, the individual the shape of the of different levels of the of the ship body it is impossible to help to 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 come to a length over uh, uh, 18 or less than 18 meters and this is this side um, was preferred to yeah was preferred to use for the the younger experimental reconstructions and i'm looking forward to see what happens with them. So um, there are meanwhile other activities, or there were meanwhile other activities like this. Uh, for instance, a, a one of our colleagues, uh, Christoph Schäfer, realized a replica building in Germersheim in, in Rheinland-Pfalz, which was under uh, the testing um, a few years ago and still under const uh, construction is another replica built in Xanten at the archaeological part uh, uh, excuse me the archaeological park in Xanten at the lower Rhine where it is built by Kesars and, and a Dutch boat builder with uh, with um, a lot of experience in traditional and also meanwhile ancient boat building. Yeah, this was more or less what I have to say on this biography of, of the yeah, 25, 26 years old mines replica. I would say an old fashioned one, but we haven't the money to cut off and make it uh, well in to sh shorten it uh, as it um, yeah, owed, deserved to be, uh, but this is the, let's say, uh, research, yeah? the, the history of research. People are doing wrong and they have to accept that. Yeah? And they, but they should, should say the truth as, as I try to do. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ronald. Um, thank you for an interesting uh, introduction and uh, description of um, the possibilities to reconstruct um, uh, the Lusoria. Now we are coming to the discussion. Probably as, a, as a, an appetizer, uh, Ronald, um, um, I may ask a question, even if, if it is a, um, if it um, provokes that you are only summarize um, what you have said um, in your presentation. Um, um, could you summarize the reliable information about the length of the boat? You, you may imagine that this is an important uh, thing that we have to deal with um, uh, in our reconstruction. Yeah. Well, this is, is, is a hard stuff to, to explain. Um, not, I think not only by me or also perhaps to understand by the participants, because um, it, it needs some a lot of experience in um, boat design, but in principle, it the the information comes from the shape preserved from the boat itself. They the question of the or the problem of the longitudinal reconstruction can be retrieved only from rack number five 
because the others were just sectionally preserved. Yeah, they are connected to each other, the rack number one to rack number five, also ge geometrically, yes. But uh, it's rack number one is still too, too short. It's an after part and the beginning of the of the image chip section of, of this boat type. But um, rack number five uh, preserve much more and it preserved visible with the look on on the the excavation plans or the pho photogrammetry uh, plan alone that it is just a, a small part missing in the aft yeah so and what did i as a guy which were asked to or which would like to to find the original boat shape which what includes the the um, the dimension of course also <clears throat> i cut i cut not not in in uh, substantially of course i cut the the preserved parts of the boat in horizontal surfaces in horizontal areas beginning uh, 10 centimeters um, upwards the keel and then up to the to the the very end the upper end of the rack and if you do so you have you have different shapes and different el elongations of the boat and there is an in a, a system uh, used in or it's it's uh, not a system it's 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 part of of geometry yeah? if the the boat lines come back to the to the this stern post yeah and there is well you are say 10 20 centimeters distant in width uh, from the the center line of the boat yeah you are very near to the end yeah? and depending on the on the level i decided to take these these um, the, these these uh, uh, curves yeah it was nothing more than the the, the longest possible um, missing um, part was much less than 18 meters and you cannot elongate a a wedge for instance the the after part of the boat of this kind of boat, of a sharp ending boat, and it was a sharp ending boat, looks like like a wedge. Yeah, and if you are near the tip of the wedge, yeah, you cannot make from this wedge a table. Yeah, this I cannot explain it <laughs> in other way. It's in a system which, or in, in, um, uh, not a system, a, um, a measure called, um, yeah. I, I do not find uh, find the English term, but the German term neither. <laughs> <laughs> I I I can only point point to my to my publication where I where I uh, substantiated this in detail. Mm, um, I, for for me, it's 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 not an, a problem, but it, I think it's it's um, um, thorough thoroughly to and and um, uh, serious not serious um, I, I should point on this um, different meanings of, of, of two scholars yeah? uh, Olaf Hoekman up to now is of uh, of the meaning the the boat uh, the longitudinal the length of the boat was more than 20 meters yeah? but he has um, to understand his meaning, one have have to read all the his articles. What I did, of course, and one can learn from it that he changed his mind for different reasons. He was influenced by by a Dutch by a Dutch scholar uh, who had, uh, I would say, some strange ideas about an, a normated boat building in antiquity, meaning that that boats were built according according a a, a mathematical system uh, 
a, a kind of, of a numbering plan without a drawing, of course, yeah, but just giving, giving sectionally um, dimensions. And he believed, uh, both believe that this, this uh, evidence of, of, this, of this same ancient, how do you say, obscure building system is given in the wreck. And uh, in uh, is, um, he, he points on an on an anomaly, as he was as he was uh, saying, uh, an anomaly in the in the, the sequence of of frames. And uh, there is actually there are actually different an anomalies. That means uh, boat builders did things other than they used uh, to, to do in the remaining parts at one. At one section, there is a side frame uh, um, uh, found, uh, usually found in the after part of the boats, aft of the of the floor timber, and in one at, in one position it was on the starboard side, on the forward position. If I look on this detail, uh, you see that there was for the boat builder was no no other no other possibility. To, to put this side frame at the after part because it was it was in a in a crone the, the floor was floor timber was made from crone oak and the the uh, the starboard starboard tip of the of this of this floor timber was was curved a bit to the aft so there was no space for the other one it's it's a bit complicated but in in detail it, it can can be understood yeah. mm -hmm. i mean it can be understood why uh, olaf hockmann uh, has another position than i published yeah. mm -hmm. and it was not easy for me to to um yeah to contradict him um because he he, he, he knows and or knew a, a lot about the mine ships much more than me because he he took part in the excavation and for many many years he he, he was um, he was in uh, he was working on them uh, and so for that reason I looked very very carefully and very thoroughly. On such details, but uh, at the very end, <laughs> I couldn't do any uh, another way. Yeah? I was absolutely convinced and found convinced that the the length of the boat was less less than eighteen meters. The the uh, LOA, I mean, you know, the waterline length was much less than seventeen meters. Are there any questions so far? We are still ahead of time, but I don't see any questions. Huh? May I ask you another question, Ronald? I, no. I, I'm sorry, no. Willingly, willingly. <laughs> um, um, <clears throat> when we are now about to, to, to cut the, the planks, uh, probably it will be in January. Uh, I will t t tell you about that uh, later on. But um, we always uh, are discussing about the um, wide of the planks, how broad uh, the planks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The width of the planks. The width of the planks. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, we have to reckon how many planks on uh, uh, had, had the boat on each side, starboard yeah. and uh, port side. Yeah. Um, and of course, you did measurements, uh, uh, the remains, and you're, you, you should be well informed <laughs> how, how wide uh, these planks have to be. I'm asking because, you know, um, uh, if we have uh, this uh, um, um, participation of, uh, of the planks um, as they are reconstructed in the earlier reconstructions, and in all, I think in all reconstructions, we have um, uh, about seven planks on each side, starboard mm -hmm. and uh, port side. Um, seven? seven? Starboard plus... and port side. Yes. Seven, seven I think. Seven, seven plus, plus stealers. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm asking because, um, especially at the underwater uh, zone of the boat, um, mm-hmm. uh, there, there is uh, the plank's course. As you know, is it, it, it had edges. You know, it's not it's not uh, curved uh, smoothly. You know, uh, it had edges. You know, edges. Edges. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You mean mean you mean rabbits? Rabbit, rabbit of yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, of course. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, then again, the question, uh, how, uh, um, uh, what, what's about the, the, the white of the planks? Yeah. The, the width of the planks is not, not under discussion. But there's, we, we know about, at least in the preserved parts of these yeah. boats, or we know from, from the preserved parts of these boats, the, the planking system. For that reason, I mentioned the steelers. So the steelers mm-hmm. are found with uh, both racks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, um, the rack number number one gives strong evidence on the width of the blanks above the water line, above the floating water line. Yeah. And since rack number number one is preserved to a length of over eight meters, we are right in the in the in the main section of the boat, or at the, perhaps around Amy ships, and the 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 width which can be measured there is this gives gives you the dimension of of the of the blanking, and if you ask for the for the 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 blanking um, below the waterline up to a say waterline. A level to 35 or even 40 centimeters. The, the main the main information comes from rack number five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's there's no there's no uh, doubt in the in the measurements of the of the blanks. Another question is the 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 thickness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The th- mm-hmm. thickness of the blanks. Of course, there's there's a an, an average yeah, of 1.8 to 2.3 centimeters, I would say. Or, yes, I'm sure. Uh, but they were individually individually uh, made, and they are they are individual. Uh, yeah, extra sometimes. Yeah, but at I cannot cannot um, remember any thickness bigger than three centimeters, and in those cases of more than 2.3 to 2.5 centimeters you find them uh, at, at the the ship end for instance yeah because uh, of an in individual individual shaping of the blanking the blanks were um, evidently uh, uh, sawn nicht sawn <laughs> sawn means uh, cut with the with the saw but they are also shaped with an with an adz, yeah, or with an with an x, yeah, with an, yeah. So, but your question was about the the width of the blanks, and they again they are not discussable, uh, not in doubt. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions? A silent audience. I would yeah. uh, I would yeah. have uh, one question. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bupius, for this amazing talk and this really, uh, yeah, all those details you have explained. There's one thing i wondering, still I uh, the first time recognized the ship finds or also had a look in your publication because there are some really, really late finds of late Roman boats uh, found yeah. in in mines and i'm still wondering what is your explanation yeah, you you published some theories about it but uh, as i remember this ship finds are so late that we do not know what is still happen in mogantiacum during this time mm-hmm. yeah mm. well i must say i'm I must stress i'm wondering that so less people uh, realize that this is a r- really an, an interesting find but i must also 
sieht, that um, this, this ship find named S8, ship eight. Yeah? It's a, it was a relic of a, a longitudinal, I would say, girder, yeah? in longitudinal girder of more than four meters length with up to three or four uh, thole pins or thole pin constructions connected to them. I didn't excavate them and I also rely on all the information I received from my former colleague Herkman and from the documentary, of course. But Herkman was writing or his right he wrote that one of these thole devices was nailed, was still nailed to this longitudinal girder. So Mm -hmm. I know nothing, nothing else of it ex uh, except the, the dating because it was dendro dated to help me 438 or so. I forgot it. Um, I, I only remember the date is after Mugantirkum is destroyed by some Germanic tribes or during the migration period. Ah, I think okay. it's 430s yeah, yeah, yeah. or something else. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It is because uh, who? Who is telling that that uh, Morgan Tiacom, it was destroyed, be, 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 but it 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 continued to exist. Yeah, it continued. Yeah, or perhaps uh, should be destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, you mean in in four hundred six, four hundred six the. Yeah. The, yes. Uh, yeah, but it continued to exist. Yeah? And well, yeah. the question is, um, experts of late antiquity are discussing this um, uh, again and again. When, but it, it's from, I think I'm not an expert of, of this period. Um, I do everything but, but doing research in late antiquity. But I know that they, uh, more and more people are sure that the, the, the Rome military organization continued up to the middle of the fifth century. Yeah. When when mines in I think in four four five five was was uh, became Frankish. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, it's 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 an exciting an exciting find, an exciting archaeological find. But I'm I'm very unhappy because it, it doesn't exist anymore. I. We took over the, all the material. We, we thought all the we took over all the material from the from the local uh, uh, monument authorities in Mainz. That happened in the in 1992. Uh, uh, as, uh, well, joined by by Olaf Herkman, of course, but not everything f from that what was found there in in this constructional pit in Mainz uh, arrived in, in our institute. The same, yeah. is true, the same is true for an interesting duck out. Yeah? It was uh, radiocarbon dated uh, to, well, to the transition of, of the late Roman or the, um, the, the early Frankish period. But it's, uh, yeah, it was lost. Nobody knows <laughs> what happened to it. Yeah, one explanation could be that the the colleagues there uh, had many, a lot of stress with the the preservation, the con conservation of, of up to uh, twenty cubic meters of timbers. Yeah, and perhaps they found um, finds other than the the better preserved wrecks not so important uh, to. Yeah, to thoroughly, um, thoroughly preserve them or conserve, uh, treat, treat them. You know. They kept them underwater. That's uh, the, the only what they could do. Um, and what the timbers, uh, which came to my institute, they were treated um, in our labs. But just that what what we received. You know. It's it's a pity. Yes, it's a pity. Thank you very much for your explanation. Well you're welcome. Nice background, Pete.